uh, teachers here at the school also. So I'm, I'm very lucky that he agreed to participate in the in the portrait painting demonstration. So he's going to be my model. Thank you, Barry. Oh, you're welcome. Just yeah. uh, forget about all the uh, movements or whatever, but I'll try and say stuff. Yeah, good. It's going to be still enough because to me, a portrait is it helps to know the person that you're doing a portrait of. If you ever have have drawn or painted, how many of you draw and paint? Most of you, excellent. Okay, so you're you're you know exactly what's going on. If you know the person, you already know hundreds of versions of that person because of the time you've spent with them, and you're going to factor that in whether you like it or not. It's going to help you decide whether to keep a mark or whether to change that mark to be like the person, or if it's not like the person, you're going to change it. So I know Barry from two, three years of, of being here at the school. So I feel very fortunate and comfortable around Barry. And Barry, I hope you feel comfortable around me, too. Oh, who's that? OK, good. Excellent. So um, what, what I want to introduce you to just very quickly is the materials that I'm going to work with. This is a very expensive brush holder, um, which I would recommend you really need to get that, to buy that, at wherever you can find it. This is uh, the liquid I will use. It's called terpenoid. It's a solvent because I'm going to be using oil paint. This is linseed oil. I will tell you when I start using linseed oil. It will be about halfway into the session. And maybe I can ask you to do, to, uh, to do me a favor. And that is, if you see that it is 6 o'clock and I haven't used this yellowish liquid yet, say it is 6 o'clock. I thought you said you were going to use the linseed oil. And that will remind me that I should be at least at the second layer um, of paint where I will use this. So this is like a compressed version of an oil painting that takes many layers. The compressed version means all those layers happen right at one after another, and they don't dry. You work wet into work wet the whole time. And the name for this is a la prima. There's but it's just straight up painting. So um, the paint that I'm going to use is burnt umber to do the initial thing. Then I'm going to use transparent red oxide. And then I'm going to use Payne's Gray mixed with the transparent red oxide. And at that point, the transparent paint will be my, my map, and then I will start using white. And that's all the colors I'm going to be using tonight. Three colors, burnt umber, transparent red, Payne's gray, and titanium white. Um, OK, what else? Anything else? Are you using brushes, or are you using? Uh... Excellent question. I'm using palette knives to start with only palette knife to start with, um, to mix. And then I'm going to probably start, a lot of this, I, I tried to plan it, but I couldn't plan it. Now that I'm seeing Barry, I'm probably going to use a brush soon. I'm going to be use, using a brush fairly soon into, the, into this. But first, I want to mix one color on my uh, piece of glass, which is my palette tonight. Glass works best as a palette for oil paint because when time comes to clean it, you can use a scraper and you can get the paint all the way off. Another reason glass is better than anything else is as you're mixing, none of the paint soaks into the surface. It just stays right on top so you know exactly what consistency your paint is. That's useful. So it's, it needs to be very liquid first and then it gradually gets more and more dry and um, thick. So let's get started. Um, I forgot to think about a musical accompaniment or something like that. You want me to put it on? Yeah, can you put it on, Barry? Can you actually choose what you want to hear? That's the yeah, model's cool. prerogative. Oh, really? Thank you, Barry. Change what it's you. You can you can do the music. You just feel comfortable with that. So I'm going to talk a lot, so it's going to take a lot longer than normal to do the painting. But this is the pose, because Barry took this pose just now, and now he's sitting like that. So that's how I want to paint just his face in there. 
So that's the first step when you're doing a portrait, is you have to say, all right, do I want the body language? Like, I love his shoes. I love his legs and his knees. But I have this here today. So today, I'm just going to stick with the face. So that's the first decision. Next question is, how big is the face going to be in the square? That's the next thing I'm trying to figure out. So I'm going to make a mark for the chin, a mark for the top of the hair, and then we're off. It's like the plane taking off. You can't go back. Once you start, that's where you're going. That's how you're going. And hopefully it'll turn out. So you notice, all this is really liquid. It's so liquid that I'm, it looks like I'm losing control, but I'm not. I'm just making it so that this shadow color of that side of the face can be all over here. And I'm just thinking about how much space the hair uses, how much space this uses, and what's gonna, how, how much of this is going to be here, and if that's good for the pose. So right now, I'm not sure how much black I'm going to have in the bottom half of the painting. So guess what I'm doing? I'm just trying it out. Painting is trial and error. I want it to be very liquid at this stage. What's the liquid? It's terpenoid. It's solvent. It's very simple. So this is like a watercolor. So if I want to make the whole thing smaller, which I do, all I got to do is go like this. So I'm changing my mind early on in the painting. And that doesn't mean you're a bad painter. It just means you changed your mind. Because you saw why you need to change your mind. So this is a little smaller than those original marks. Remember, they were there and there. Why do you go smaller? Uh, so that I can have more of the gesture of the head plus the neck plus the shoulders. To me, that's an important part of this pose. So what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to lay in the shadows all together in big groups so that I can then work with them as a big mass. As soon as I know that I have the right size, I can start putting in more areas of color. So I know it looks like a mess right now, and it is, but that's okay. When people say you got to take risks in painting, this is what they mean. Okay, now. You still okay, Barry, or do you want to break? No, no, no. no. You're good? I'm good. Could you do the music cut? No. What's the mixture? Is it burnt umber and your red? Burnt umber, red, and a little bit of the paint's gray. So all, all of together, the dark the colors start. all together. Yes. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get back. I'm I'm, what I'm doing is I'm using this rag like a brush and I'm trying to pick out the lights so that I have the gesture a little bit uh, of, the, of the pose. And I like it. I actually think this is going to work now. So what I can do is I can start to put in the blacks. See how quickly your mind can accept something 
that it thinks is going to work, and then you can go ahead to the next stage. The next stage is going to be putting in the blacks of this bottom part, and I'm going to use a palette knife for that. Because now I say to myself, well, I need something to start from. And I've decided a lot of things already by messing around in this very messy way. So now, once I start with this, I know that's going to stay there. And you see how rough I'm working. It's okay to be rough in the beginning. In fact, if you do a brush stroke, I'm going to show you guys something. If you do something like this, and you say, oh, I really want to keep that. It's a terrible thing in the beginning of your painting because how are you going to do your painting if you want to keep that little thing? It's terrible. So the best thing is to do something that's not quite good, but to do something that you know is maybe going to get good. Just don't keep it if you know it's going to be bad for sure, but keep it if it could possibly become good. See those mistake colors? I'm just building them in. It's fine. I'm adding a couple of, uh, like his ear gets, it gets um, redder. So I'm going to clear out a spot here for his ear. See how I just cleared that out? It's very easy to do in oil paint. In, in acrylic, that would have been drier and you couldn't change that. But in oil paint, that's why you want those working properties to be a little bit longer, so that you can do things like what I just did. Now, I'm at a point where I can do what people would call the portrait. The portrait means I'm going to now use dark <coughs> colors and place things like the eyes, the, the parts of the nose I can see, the corners of the mouth, that, all those feature kind of related elements. And if I get those right, it will start looking like him now. So I blocked in the very rough colors thinking ahead, trying to think ahead. And now is the time when hopefully it will start to look a little bit like Barry. Notice what I'm doing with my brush, you guys. Dipping a little bit back into the linseed oil finally because I want a little bit more precision and accuracy. Now, what's the color that I've got in there? It's a dark, warmish color. I, I can't describe it. You'll see it when it lands on there. It's, it's got a function as the eyes, the shadows of the eyes, the shadows of the nose corners of the mouth, like it's got a function of a lot of things, so it's pretty neutral.
Okay, that was the first pass of the darks within the shadows after having done the reflective light. So I haven't even done the lights yet. Take a break, Barry. Thank you. Would you like a stool? No, I'm, I'm fine. It's, it's, so pre-mixing the colors is probably the single most important thing that looks like you're just playing around. But in fact, you're technically doing exactly what you need so that when you move the paint from here to here, you're, you're not going to have to guess. You know already that there's good things there, ready to go. Um, and all you have to do is put it on and then move it around right. So, so that was the important work that I just now did. And here we go, this is the fun part. I say fun because you can use your drawing skills even with a big brush and a loose painting. It's fun. Sometimes you have to clean your brush every brush stroke. Now what am I doing? I'm giving the hair a little bit of direction because before it was just palette knife, remember? Mm -hmm. Since I have this brush in my hand, I'm just doing it right now. Well, it's not working. I need liquid. <coughs> going back to the color that was the hair. And I'm going to try to make a little bit more of a structure that's based on what's there. So I, that light is too light. You see, it, it needs to group with the shadows. It started to fall out of the shadows. It needs to not fall out of the shadows. Are you guys following me? It needs to be darker. So to do that, you can use other paint that you already have. that I had saved for the skin. Uh -huh. I used it for these Was dark that very white light from the very yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. So so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to just dip it into the solvent, run it across my paper towel a couple times, and uh -huh. it'll be okay. Clean it out. It'll be uh -huh. oh. And presto, it looks more like them already. Later I can cover that with some white paint if I want. And then this side too, just a little bit. That 
that's good enough in terms of the correction. Now, back to work. What I need to do is, this is supposed to be a portrait, so I need to get into those parts again. That first time I said, remember I said, now it's going to start to look like a portrait? I'm back to that. Adjusting, hopefully refining the darks within the face and the lights and the way the lights do the dark area. So let's see. Yeah. So I need So now the poop will be in the pudding. Did I clean my brush enough? And because I, I've done this a lot and I made the same mistake a lot, I'm using darker colors in the face first. So in case I didn't clean it enough, it's going to be okay. Alright, it's getting close to done. You guys feel that also? No. Yeah. It's not, it doesn't need that much more actual work. And at this stage, at this stage, you have to really work so that you don't overwork the paint. So what's the best way to do that? Walk away. Who said walk away? Walk away, look at something else. So I'm going to look at all of you for a little bit. <laughs> Barry, you get a break. Uncross your legs, do something else. We'll just take it. All right, now I'm going for the highlights in the hair. Somebody said that to me. They said, are you going to do that silky look to the hair? And here, I'm trying to now, going to be doing it here. So now is the time. Don't do this kind of stuff too early, though, because it'll just look like you're look like you're putting icing on the cake before the cake is done. You don't want that. This, everybody knows that this is a good effect that you get. So save it for when you need it at the very end, like now. trying to group all of his little sideburn hairs into one brush stroke, one brush stroke, which ends right at the right distance. Two brush strokes. Trying to keep the hair this, the right color so it's still shadow. done and what I want to do now is just clean up the background a little bit with white paint straight white paint I have a lot of white left so it's great because I hate wasting paint now what do you do with your leftover paint in this day and age it's a small planet you reuse your paint as much as you possibly can you give it to a fellow student you do something what I always do is, and I, I'm sorry I didn't do it this time, I have canvases that I, that are messed, that, that they just need something, they're messed up, or they're even just white gesso from the dollar store, something that I don't want to paint on as is. You use all your scrap paint, and you just use your palette knife, and you cover it. It's a very soothing, calming, therapeutic feeling. You get rid of your paint, you don't have to throw anything away, and you have a beautiful surface to work on later. What? Titian did that, I believe. Not only, I'm sure I'm most everybody did in the olden days. <laughs> and, but nowadays, it's, the, it's also a really good time to do that. So, Barry, if you don't mind just staying kind of there, but you don't have to be in the pose. It's just as I do this, I might notice something where I say, oops, I forgot to put a highlight on the hair, or I need that other ear after all. So I want to have him there just for that in case. But here I go. Just going to put the background and clean it up so I don't have to make anything up without Barry. I want this whole painting to be Barry. I don't want it to be anything else. If you're doing a portrait, don't be full of yourself. Be full of the person you're trying to paint because that's what it is. It's the painted version of him. It's not me, it's him. I try to disappear and defer to what was there. I don't try to produce myself. I'm just using my materials and my mind to make it like what I saw there.
and what I know. And, uh, I think it's because of that gradual blend. The Palinic was not leaving enough gradualness there. So it's not getting rid of that brown that still seems to be there somehow. There. See that orangey that was left over? I don't want that. I want it to just be medium. There. And now there's a kind of a structure that's, that I might be able to vary. I'm going to need you. Is it 7 o'clock yet? No. No. It's quarter to 7. Quarter to. So give me 10 more minutes of just sort of, I want to change the hair now. It'll take me a bit of time, but I want to do it. It's worth it, because this is something that nobody would expect from the portrait of Barry, which is the directionality of each tuft of hair. But well, it I, really... I cut it myself, so... Yeah. <laughs> there you go. See? So it kind of there's not much going on in this area of the painting. So here's a place where I would let somebody do really fine work with a fine brush because there's a reason for it. It's that glistening little bits of hair that happen to be right there. And it kind of does specific things and it's warm and cool. You see these temperatures? They're very specific. I'm trying to get them very specific there. And here it comes in like that. It's one more. There needs to be a reflected light right here to give this plane a little bit more presence. One more. Last one. Yes, okay. That's it? We're done. Right, sorry I kind of petered off with the talking. Thank you so much, Barry. It was really a pleasure. It was really, really nice. Do you like it? It's nice. That's when you were, they'll put that on the front of the newspaper. So this was two hours of painting uh, with Barry McPherson as a model and uh, his portrait straight all of the painting, uh, starting with transparent paint. Uh, and uh, pretty straight in the palette knife work and brush work with uh, linseed oil as the medium. Uh, only four colors, white, transparent red, paint gray, and burnt umber. Thank you. My name is Ed Kroll.